UB Ports, a perfect example of floss, picking up a project the canonical loss, bringing the project to much higher heights, wow, would you look at the sights. It's not easy, but if you look real carefully, assuming your vision isn't too blurry, you may see something scurry. An idea, look at it go, up and down and all around, what a show, it even radiates with such a wonderful glow, whoa, what an idea that person managed to throw, this is what I told myself. Although, many incompatible apps give me woe. I know, all it needs is some time to grow. UB Ports Ubuntu Touch with its Lormeri environment. A wonderful GUI that's just so elegant. Let's get into it. My videos are also available on Odyssey. Lormeri is one of the most polished and unique desktop environments you can get for a mobile Linux device. The simple swipe gestures are just so intuitive and fun to use. It really has a triple A level of quality and elegance, though I suppose that's expected considering the fact that it had more time to develop. Speaking of which, everything I'll be talking about today will be of the development branch, though I have experience using the stable branch. Out of the box, UB Ports has done a great job making this OS really feel like a real alternative, a third player in the field. It may seem a bit weird, but when I was younger and I saw my first Ubuntu Unity desktop, I saw it as the future. It was so perfectly different, having two bars instead of one, and having the bar take the top left corner of the screen. Something about it always made me feel like it was really different. It didn't feel like it was just a better version of things that already existed. It was its own thing, standing loud and proud. Note that this was the first time I was looking at a Linux system as a Linux system. Touch gives me this feeling as well. And to me, it's somewhat nostalgic. While we're at it, speaking of nostalgia, Ubuntu phones. That could have been a thing, a real big thing. I remember looking at reviews about that. Even MKBHD talked about it. It wasn't really even that long ago. Every day since, I saw that I wanted a Linux phone. And it's just crazy to me that I'm here, finally holding one in my hands. Moving on. Due to its radically unfair starting time compared to other OS's, Touch has insane polish and quite good performance all around. I'm not sure why, but even YouTube feels just a bit smoother than other OS's I've tried so far on the Pine phone. I've had a couple of crashes with the Morph browser, but only on the development branch. I also tried library.tv and was excited to see it almost work. As a user of Android smartphones, it's possible the KDE experience will resonate to your bones. Plasma is next gen experience. Something quite familiar, though lack of apps can make you a bit bitter. Perhaps with Android, compatibility will be a bit better. Just as wine helped convert many to desktop, maybe Adbox could help us reach the top, aim to convert, no, no shame, just a bit more pain. Or is a smaller flame that burns less bright, but burn much longer be better? I signed this letter. We'll move to something tactile, the Pine Phone with KDE Plasma Mobile. Of 
Before we get started, I just want to let you know that only three... Ah, uh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Can't wait for it to get even better. If that's at all possible. I assume it is. The app center is a bit disappointing right now, but somewhat promising. Not many of the apps there work for me, and over half of the ones that do are web apps. It's fine, otherwise I do like the center's experience. The camera app is wonderful, I really enjoy it but the camera itself is underwhelming, not to mention the performance. A lot of pre-installed apps are really nice. The phone, calculator, calendar, and more are really cool. I especially love the calendar. It's everything I could ever want. A day scheduler that shows what needs to be done throughout the day, uh, an easy way to add events. I'm missing a couple of quality of life options, such as creating bi-weekly events, but otherwise I use I used to use Google Calendar. I know I'm embarrassed, but this works exactly like that did, and so I can finally have a personal offline scheduler that, that works how I want it to work. And speaking of polished experiences, I do love the many default options to choose from when it comes to alarm and phone sounds. Sure, it may be a bit of a bloat, if you don't plan on using any more than one, but it's fun to just scroll and listen to the different sounds and jingles. Tis the season. Less than 4% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you like what you saw and want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing. Note that it's free and fills me with glee. In conclusion, my biggest disappointment other than the lack of open store PinePhone compatible apps would be the fact that the file system is in read only. I understand why they did this, I think. And it's easy enough to set up a script that makes it read and write, but my inner nerd would simply just rather that be done by default. Something Manjaro seems to understand. Hint hint for Manjaro or Mary video. Thank you oh so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.